Hi everyone, my name is Vishnu R. I am working as a Boomi integration developer in Techie Geekup Software Solutions. Today I will be discussing about a topic implementing O2.0 in Boomi. So O2.0 is nothing but an authentication method that is available while consuming an API using HTTP client connector. So before jumping into O2.0, let us first understand what is authentication and what are the different types available in Boomi. So authentication is the process of verifying the digital identity of a client or a user before granting the access to an API. In case of authentication types, we have basic, OAuth, and OAuth 2.0. So let us first understand what is the difference between basic and OAuth. So basic is a username and password based approach, whereas OAuth is a token based approach. In basic, the credential doesn't have any expiry time unless it is manually changed. But in case of OAuth, the token has an expiry uh, time after which it has to be regenerated. In case of basic, the scope of the resource which are accessible cannot be restricted. But in case of OAuth, the scope of the resources which are accessible can be restricted. So let us come to OAuth versus OAuth 2.0. So OAuth is transport independent. Security is not delegated to HTTPS or TLS. But OAuth 2.0 is transport dependent and the security is delegated to HTTPS or TLS. OAuth is found in cryptography, especially digital signatures, whereas OAuth 2.0 is centered around bearer tokens. OAuth access tokens could be stored for more of more than a year, or OAuth 2.0 access tokens are short-lived. So let us now understand what is OAuth 2.0. So OAuth is an open standard for authorization, and OAuth 2.0 works on the basis of grant types. So we have three grant types that is available in Boomi which are nothing but client credential, resource owner credential, and authorization code. So before going into the practicality, let us first understand what is the three grant types and how does it work. So in case of client credential, we will be having a client which will be needing a resource. So before sending the request to the resource, it needs an authorization. For that, there will be an authorization server. So the client will be sending a request which will be containing a client ID as well as a client secret and that request will be sent to an authorization server. This authorization server will validate the client ID and secret and it will provide us an access token. So using this access token, there will be a call that will be going to the resource server and the server will validate the token that is received and after which it will give the access for the resource. So this is basically about client credentials. Whereas in case of resource owner credential, there will be a user who is a resource owner which uh, will be having the username as well as the password. So he will be providing the username and the password for authentication. And the client application on behalf of the user will give a call to the authorization server for the access token. And it will contain this client ID, client secret, as well as the username and password. So this request will be validated by the server and it will give us back a token, which is the access token. And using this access token, there will be a call that will be going to the resource server. And once it is validated, you'll be getting the resource. In case of authorization code, how it works is there is a user, but rather than giving the client application, the username and password, this will be directly validated by the user itself. So once the request is passed, the request will contain a client ID and client secret where the user will have to uh, give the username and password and authorize the server. So this authorization request will be done by the user. Once it is authorized, an authorization code will be returned to us. And using this authorization code, there will be another call that will be going to a token server, which will provide us the access token. And after getting the access token, we will be having a call for the resource. So this is the theoretical part about how these grant types work. So here I have a process which will be consuming a Salesforce API. And the Salesforce API will be having three grant types. One will be client credential, one will be resource owner credential, and one will be authorization code. So for client credential, I will show the connection details. Here, we'll be using O2.0 along with grant type as client credential, where there will be a client ID as well as client secret that will be provided. And this URL will belong to the access token URL or the access token server. So once we have provided these details, this is the URL for the resource. So how it works is, first of all, the call will go to this access token URL along with the client ID and client secret. And once it is validated, it will be generating a token. And this token will be sent 
as a request to this URL, which is the resource URL. So I'll execute this process once. So finally, we'll be getting the resource once the authentication is completed. So now coming to the resource owner credential, the connection will be having the grant type as resource owner credential where the client ID and client secret has to be passed. And as I told, we have to hit the access token URL itself. But before hitting it, we need to generate the token. So in order to generate the token, we need to specify the username as well as password, which is related to the application that you are going to consume. So once you are providing the username and password, we will be receiving one access token and using that access token, we will be sending another request, which will give us the resource. So once we are giving the password, it will generate a token. So once the token is generated, we can just test this API, which will give us the access for the resource. And when you come to the final grant type, that is auth code. In the connection details, we will be having the grant type as authorization code where client ID and client secret will be used. But the first call will be for an authorization token URL. So this will be the authorization URL and there will be a token URL. And you need to generate the access token. So while you are trying to hit the API or while you are trying to generate the access token, as you can see, it will redirect you to a page where you need to give your credentials. So here the user will be giving the credentials and user will be authenticating it. And only once it is authenticated, we will be getting the access for the resource. So by this process, I am authenticating that I am trying to access the resource. Now it will generate an access token. And after that, when we are hitting the resource, we will be getting the access for the resource. So here you can see I got the access for the resource and this will be the resource that I am capturing. So this is all about the uh, three different grant types that is available in Boomi. And whenever we are trying to consume an API, we should know what grant type they are using and what are the details that has to be passed so that we can get the access for the resource. So by this, let me conclude. Thank you so much for watching the video and have a nice day.